The shape and nature of fixed broadband networks is changing as new service strategies, technologies and architectures are introduced by network operators. And one of the key partners for many major fixed broadband network operators is ADTRAN. And I'm speaking today with Ronan Kelly, CTO, EMEA and APAC from ADTRAN about key developments in the industry. So uh, Ronan, thanks for joining us today. Um, have fibre broadband deployments gained in strategic importance in the past year? Uh, firstly, Ray, it's my pleasure. Delighted to join you today. To your question, I think would, it's safe to say without question, they've gained in strategic importance. If we look at the activities that are occurring across the globe now with regard to government initiatives getting behind broadband rollout and particularly fibre broadband rollout, there's more investment funds being pumped into fibre infrastructure now than at any other time in history. Um, the way I've described it to a lot of people that I've spoken to about on this topic is we're, we're in a golden age for fiber investment at this point in time. Um, if we look at the UK, for example, over five billion pounds sterling has been put up by the government to drive fiber into the rural parts of the UK. And that's being more than matched by private equity investment and infrastructure investment funds where probably close to 20 billion pounds is being made available across all of the different challenger operators in the market, not to mention what OpenReach themselves are pumping into the market by way of investment in fiber infrastructure. On the US side of things, we see the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund as well, which has close to $20 billion earmarked for deployment of um, fiber broadband throughout the, UK, or the US, particularly to those rural communities to bridge that digital divide. We've also got Germany as well. I think they've earmarked close to 15 billion euro to drive fiber investment throughout Germany. So I don't recall any other time in my 30 years in this industry where so much funding has been made available for any type of infrastructure investment in the telecom space. Yeah, no, it's great to see the, the funds going into these digital highways now. Um, now, in, in general, we've, we've got the funding coming in. What are the other key trends that ADTRAN is seeing in the fixed broadband access network sector in 2021? There's a number of key trends that are starting to emerge. I think, first of all, we're starting to see what I'd classify as the democratization of gigabit service rates. If you look at the price point that's being charged for gigabit services, for many households it's within the elastic spend that they would have available for broadband. For example, there's operators in the, in the UK market now today offering 900 megabits per second for 29 pound per month, which is extremely reasonable and within the reach of many, many households. And that's for a symmetric 900 meg service. The other big trend though that we're seeing now as a result of this wider availability of cost competitive gigabit experiences is the bottleneck now is starting to shift into the home. So when I, unblock the WAN connection going into the household. Now, all of a sudden, the in-home infrastructure that delivers that gigabit connectivity throughout the home and to every device that connects to the network, that's really coming under scrutiny now. And a lot of the skeletons that have existed for a long, long time are really starting to rear their heads now when people realize, well, hang on, I've bought my new shiny gigabit fiber service, but I can only get 100 meg or 200 meg in the home. What's wrong here? And quite often that manifests itself in troubleshooting calls with the service providers. So what we're starting to see now is the dawning recognition across the operator community that they need to get a much more automated whole home gigabit Wi-Fi solution to match the fiber connectivity that they're building into the homes. So that way the customers can realize the, the gigabit experience on their devices, wherever they are within their homes, and they're not driving up the support call volumes um, within the call centers of the operators. Absolutely, that's uh, the next major challenge, it would seem, uh, once these uh, very fast fixed access lines are in place. Um, now, one of the uh, other trends we're starting to see in the industry, and, and not just in fixed broadband, is the, the trend towards more open disaggregated systems. Uh, are open disaggregated fixed broadband network architectures being deployed by network operators today? Yes, finally they are. As I described to somebody recently, this is the overnight success that took eight years to happen. Um, so we first started going down the path of disaggregating our OLT solutions. The very first conversations were around eight years ago in ADTRAN. 
And we're at the point now where we've delivered the broadest uh, portfolio of open disaggregated OLT solutions in the industry. And this year, particularly in 2021, we've started to see the first go lives with these solutions, where today we've you know, significant names like Deutsche Telekom and OpenReach have obviously selected the solution and started deployment of the solutions that we bring to the market. But even as I speak to you now, there's, I think it's like six operators now in the UK that are deploying the solution and others in the US as well. So it's at that early inflection point within the industry now for a lot of the new bills that are starting to occur. The operators are looking at all of this new fiber being deployed and they're asking the question, what do I want to light that fiber with? particularly if I've got to look at it for the next 10, 15 years. And many of them are reaching the conclusion that a closed, vertically integrated chassis system does not meet their needs and that they want to start afresh with a clean sheet and utilize a lot of the innovation that's occurred across the industry to, first of all, open up their systems. Um, and then secondly, take advantage of the benefits that disaggregation brings to them. So they have a lot more flexibility in how and where they deploy their solutions to connect their customers. So flexibility, obviously very key here, um, but is there a broader set of advantages uh, to such architectures being uh, brought into the field by network operators? Absolutely right. I think one of the key benefits that it brings is that flexibility around the deployment architecture. Um, if you picture a traditional chassis based system, no matter how small your deployment, you've always got that same initial upfront investment that you must make as a service provider. You must buy a chassis based system. You must buy a, the line cards for that system. You must buy the switching modules to connect it to the rest of the world and the control modules so you can manage it. So even if you've only got 100 customers, you're on the hook for that big investment from day one. Whereas with the open disaggregated systems, you can take a single pizza box and deploy that in a standalone fashion without any additional need for control modules or aggregation switches or anything like that. And then as your business continues to grow, you can start to add more pizza boxes and chain those units together. And it's only when you reach a sufficient critical mass that you need to introduce aggregation for resilience purposes that that's when you need to make that investment at that point in time in some locations you may never make that investment so that flexibility about when you need to invest and what's the the right amount of money to invest in a particular location we've got solutions within the disaggregated portfolio that scale down as low as 100 users and those same solutions are part of a family of solutions that scale all the way up to one 100,000 users and beyond in the same location. So it's having that linear investment model and the predictability that goes with that, that operators really value. Okay, excellent. Now, you mentioned earlier on that Adtran has been uh, working on uh, open access architectures for, for eight years now. Uh, what have you actually brought to market? Do you have like a, a, a full set of, uh, of open disaggregated um, products that you, that you have in your portfolio? Yeah, it's hard to believe it's eight years since we first started discussing the trends that were happening in the data center industry at the time and how that was going to manifest itself in the telecoms industry. But it's gone by quickly. We've been busy. Um, we've been investing from an R&D perspective on multiple different fronts. We've invested heavily on our Mosaic operating system, which is a very robust and extremely feature rich operating system to run on the disaggregated OLT solutions. But unlike a lot of the vendors within the industry where you know they're kind of hand-waving to this whole uh, shift towards open disaggregated, Adtran has leaned properly into it and we have the most comprehensive uh, portfolio of open disaggregated OLT solutions available in the industry today. And that portfolio has been focused towards rather than just taking off the shelf white box solutions that are really designed around data center dimensions uh, what we've done is we've taken our 35 years of hardware experience in the telco space and we've applied that directly to these disaggregated OLTs. So now you have a portfolio that are optimized for um, Etsy deployment in a sub 300 millimeter configuration. Um, they're also environmentally hardened, so they lend themselves directly to deployment in street cabinets as well. And you've got a range of different port densities within these solutions, allowing you to target the smallest communities uh, with just four ports on an OLT, all the way up to the highest density solutions with 48 ports upon on a single OLT solution in two rack units of space. And that today represents the highest density of OLT port configuration available within the industry. 
So of, of course, fiber, there's a lot of investment going on in, in fiber uh, access at the moment, but it's not the only broadband technology uh, option. Uh, so as fiber access deployments ramp up in Europe, is there a role also for fixed wireless access? Is that something that the operators are interested in? Very much so. What, what we're seeing being pushed by the governments out there, and this is aligned with the targets set down in the European Electronic Communications Code from Brussels, is it's really a drive towards gigabit society. Ideally, they would like it to be full fiber to everybody, but there is recognition that that can be difficult to achieve in some circumstances, and particularly as you look out towards more rural communities, etc. So what we're seeing now is fiber extension and fiber extension, be that through fixed wireless access or through utilization of other technologies like GFAST for in-building cabling meets the criteria that are set out in the European Electronic Communications Code if you've got fiber either to the basement or to the antenna of millimeter wave fixed wireless access equipment. We're now starting to see a mix of different operators emerge that are taking advantage of that capability. You've got some that are traditional microwave fixed wireless access providers that are now starting to overbuild themselves with a hybrid of fiber and millimeter wave technology so that they can bring their customer base up into that gigabit realm and not run the risk of being overbuilt by competing infrastructures. But also what we've got is some operators are using this as a time to market accelerator where they roll out with millimeter wave fixed wireless access initially. And when they get sufficient penetration in a particular town or village, they then follow through with fiber infrastructure because they know they've got the customer base already and they protected that customer base from somebody else getting in there first with fiber. And then once they follow through with that fiber infrastructure, they can repatriate the radio infrastructure to go and target the next town and the next town after that. So without question, there's very, very strong demand there. We've seen significant rise in interest in our millimeter wave access solution from the operators that have been seeking funding in the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund in the United States, where they've recognized that some of the benefits that come with AdTrans solution, because it uses um, six channels in the millimeter wave spectrum, the last two channels, channels five and six, are not subjected to the same atmospheric uh, attenuation conditions, the oxygen absorption attenuation, as the first four channels um, in that 60 gigahertz spectrum space. So what that allows for is more robust deployments over longer distances with higher capacities to the customers. And this is where the Adtran solution is really gaining popularity now amongst those Ordoff winners as they try and cover as many of the customers as possible with the mandatory one gig down and 500 meg up requirement but with as little infrastructure equipment as possible. And that's where our sweet spot really comes into play. On the German side of things, we're seeing a lot of the operators now, and not just in Germany, we're seeing this in Australia as well, where a lot of the operators are focusing on leveraging GFAST technology in a fiber to the basement type configuration for MDUs. And then that 212 megahertz GFAST technology comfortably delivers gigabit then to each of the residential units inside of those MDUs. So it's very much a fiber first mentality with the operators, but they're using fiber extension where it makes sense for them. Yeah, and it's interesting to see there's still plenty of technology innovation going on in these uh, other alternative uh, ways of connecting people. Um, so with, with that in mind, there's always something new uh, coming down the pipe, so to speak, uh, in the broadband sector. What in your mind is set to be the next big game changer in the fixed broadband network sector? For me, with all the investment that's happened in the fiber infrastructure and is going to happen over the next four or five years. As I mentioned earlier, we're shifting that bottleneck inside the home. And um, that's where the problems are really starting to emerge now as we go forward. There is a real requirement on the operator community to get control of this quickly before it drives their call centers into the ground. Basically, the old way of dealing with challenges within the home of sending a technician out to site particularly in a world where Wi-Fi is predominantly going to be the root cause of many of the problems as we go forward, that does not scale. The operators need to move to an environment where automation is taking care of optimizing that Wi-Fi environment on a real-time basis and dealing with issues that are emerging before they ever manifest themselves as problems that affect the consumer that's out there. 
For those rare scenarios, when you do have a cloud automated environment, like the Plume solution that Adtran has augmented its service delivery gateways with, for those rare occasions where the optimization cannot deal with the specific issue at hand, you must have a very sophisticated toolkit that gives you visibility right down to every end device that's connecting to the network within the home and visibility of which, um, which gateways they're connecting to, which APs they're connecting to within the home and have give you the ability to change channels and to steer, steer the client to specific APs, et cetera, remotely so that you can solve the vast majority of problems without ever having to incur a truck roll to deal with those problems. The real challenge in the Wi-Fi world is it's a dynamic environment. You send a truck roll out to fix a, cust a customer's problem within their home, a week later, the Wi-Fi environment will change because other ORF interferers from next door or from across the street, and you've got to send another truck roll out to try and deal with that. So I've described it in the past as playing whack-a-mole. You know, you fix one problem and another one rears its head and another one and another one. And this is where automation is the only way to deal with this on a scalable basis. Yeah, there's no doubt that open source developments and open architectures are really providing a, a lot more flexibility and a lot more choice uh, to the network deployment companies these days. Um, so, Ronan, great to chat to you and to catch up with uh, developments from the Adtran side and also find out the key trends out there in the fixed broadband industry. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Ray.